mountain. The mountain held the town as in a shadow. I saw so much before I slept there once. I noticed that I missed stars in the west, where its black body cut into the sky. Near me it seemed. I felt it like a wall behind which I was sheltered from a wind. And yet between the town and it I found, when I walked forth at dawn to see new things, were fields, a river, and beyond more fields. The river at the time was fallen away, and made a widespread brawl on cobblestones, but the signs showed what it had done in spring. Good grassland gullied out, and in the grass ridges of sand and driftwood stripped of bark. I crossed the river and swung round the mountain, and there I met a man who moved so slow with white-faced oxen in a heavy cart. It seemed no harm to stop him altogether. What town is this? I asked. This? Lunenburg. Then I was wrong. The town of my sojourn beyond the bridge was not that of the mountain but only felt at night its shadowy presence. Where is your village? Very far from here. There is no village, only scattered farms. We were but sixty voters last election. We can't in nature grow to many more. That thing takes all the room. He moved his goad. The mountain stood there to be pointed at. Pasture ran up the side a little way, and then... There was a wall of trees with trunks. After that, only tops of trees and cliffs imperfectly concealed among the leaves. A dry ravine emerged from under boughs into the pasture. That looks like a path. Is that the way to reach the top from here? Not for this morning, but some other time. I must be getting back to breakfast now. I don't advise your trying from this side. There is no proper path. But those that have been up, I understand, have climbed from lads. That's five miles back. You can't mistake the place. They logged it there last winter some way up. I take you, but I'm bound the other way. You've never climbed it. I've been on the sides, deer hunting and trout fishing. There's a brook that starts up on it somewhere. I've heard say right at the top, tip-top, a curious thing. But what would interest you about the brook? It's always cold in summer, warm in winter. One of the great sights going is to see its steam in winter, like an ox's breath, until the bushes all along its banks are inch deep with the frosty spines and bristles. You know the kind. Then let the sun shine on it. There ought to be a view around the world from such a mountain, if it isn't wooded clear to the top. I saw through leafy screens, great granite terraces in sun and shadow, shelves one could rest a knee on getting up, with depths behind him sheer a hundred feet, or sit and turn on and look out and down, with little ferns in crevices at his elbow. As to that I can't say, but there's the spring, right on the summit, almost like a fountain. That ought to be worth seeing. If it's there, you never saw it? I guess there's no doubt about its being there. I never saw it. It may not be right at the very top. It wouldn't have to be a long way down to have some head of water from above. And a good distance down might not be noticed by anyone who'd come a long way up. One time I asked a fellow climbing it to look and tell me later how it was. What did he say? He said there was a lake somewhere in Ireland on a mountain top. But a lake's different. What about the spring? He never got up high enough to see. That's why I don't advise your trying this side. He tried this side. I've always meant to go and look myself, but you know how it is. It doesn't seem so much to climb a mountain you've worked around at the foot of all your life. What would I do? Go in my overalls with a big stick, the same as when the cows haven't come down to the bars at milking time? or with a shotgun for a stray black bear. It wouldn't seem real to climb for climbing it. I shouldn't climb it if I didn't want to, 
not for the sake of climbing. What's its name? We call it whore. I don't know if that's right. Can one walk around it? Would it be too far? You can drive around and keep in Lunenburg, but it's as much as ever you can do. The boundary lines keep in so close to it. Whore is the township, and the township's whore, and a few houses sprinkled round the foot, like boulders broken off the upper cliff, rolled out a little farther than the rest. Warm in December, cold in June, you say? I don't suppose the water's changed at all. You and I know enough to know it's warm, compared with cold, and cold compared with warm. But all the fun's in how you say a thing. You've lived here all your life? Ever since Hor was no bigger than a... What, I did not hear. He drew the oxen toward him with light touches of his slim goad on nose and offside flank, gave them their marching orders, and was moving. A hundred collars. Lancaster bore him, such a little town, such a great man. It doesn't see him often of late years, though he keeps the old homestead and sends the children down there with their mother to run wild in the summer, a little wild. Sometimes he joins them for a day or two and sees old friends he somehow can't get near. They meet him in the general store at night, preoccupied with formidable mail, rifling a printed letter as he talks. They seem afraid. He wouldn't have it so, though a great scholar, he's a Democrat, if not at heart, at least on principle. Lately, when coming up to Lancaster, his train being late, he missed another train and had four hours to wait at Woodsville Junction after eleven o'clock at night, too tired to think of sitting such an ordeal out. He turned to the hotel to find a bed. No room, the night clerk said, unless. Woodville's a place of shrieks and wandering lamps and cars that shock and rattle and one hotel. You say unless? Unless you wouldn't mind sharing a room with someone else. Who is it? A man? So I should hope. What kind of man? I know him. He's all right. A man's a man. Separate beds, of course, you understand. The night clerk blinked his eyes and dared him on. Who's that man sleeping in the office chair? Has he had the refusal of my chance? He was afraid of being robbed or murdered. What do you say? I'll have to have a bed. The night clerk led him up three flights of stairs and down a narrow passage full of doors, at the last one of which he knocked and entered. Leif, here's a fellow who wants to share your room. Show him this way. I'm not afraid of him. I'm not so drunk I can't take care of myself. The night clerk clapped a bedstead at the foot. This'll be yours. Good night, he said, and went. Leif was the name, I think? Yes, Leif Ayette. You got it the first time. And yours? Magoon. Dr. Magoon. A doctor? Well, a teacher. Professor, square the circle till you're tired. Hold on. There's something I don't think of now that I had on my mind to ask the first man that knew anything I happened in with. I'll ask you later. Don't let me forget it. The doctor looked at Leif and looked away. A man? A brute. Naked above the waist. He sat there, creased and shining in the light, fumbling the buttons in a well-starched shirt. I'm moving into a size larger shirt. I felt mean lately. Mean's no name for it. I just found what the matter was tonight. I've been a-choking, like a nursery tree, when it outgrows the wire band of its name tag. I blamed it on the hot spell we've been having. T'was nothing but my foolish hanging back, not liking to own up, I'd grown a size. Number 18 this is. What size do you wear? The doctor caught his throat convulsively. Oh, uh, 14. 14. 14, you say so. I can remember when I wore 14. And come to think, I must have been back at home. More than a hundred collars. Size 14. Too bad to waste them all. You ought to have them. They're yours and welcome. Let me send them to you. What makes you stand there on one leg like that? You're not much further than where Kike left you. You act as if you wish you hadn't come. 
Sit down or lie down, friend. You make me nervous. The doctor made a subdued dash for it and propped himself at bay against a pillow. Not that way, with your shoes on Kike's white bed. You can't rest that way. Let me pull your shoes off. Don't touch me, please, I say. Don't touch me, please. I'll not be put to bed by you, my man. Just as you say, have it your own way, then. My man, is it? You talk like a professor. Speaking of who's afraid of who, however, I'm thinking I have more to lose than you, if anything should happen to be wrong. Who wants to cut your number 14 throat? Let's have a showdown as an evidence of good faith. There is ninety dollars. Come if you're not afraid. I'm not afraid. There's five. That's all I carry. I can search you. Where are you moving over to? Stay still. You better tuck your money under you and sleep on it, the way I always do when I'm with people I don't trust at night. Will you believe me if I put it there, right on the counterpane, that I do trust you? You'd say so, Mr. Man. I'm a collector. My ninety isn't mine. You won't think that. I pick it up a dollar at a time, all around the country for the weekly news, published in Bow. You know the weekly news? Known it since I was young. Then you know me. Now we are getting on together, talking. I'm sort of something for it at the front. My business is to find what people want. They pay for it, and so they ought to have it. Fairbanks, he says to me. He's editor. Feel out the public sentiment, he says. A good deal comes on me when all is said. The only trouble is we disagree in politics. I'm Vermont Democrat. You know what that is? Sort of double-dyed. The news has always been Republican. Fairbanks, he says to me, help us this year, meaning by us their ticket. No, I says, I can't and won't. You've been in long enough. It's time you turned around and boosted us. You'll have to pay me more than ten a week if I'm expected to elect Bill Taft. I doubt if I could do it anyway. You seem to shape the paper's policy. You see, I'm in with everybody, know them all. I almost know their farms as well as they do. You drive around? Must be pleasant work. It's business, but I can't say it's not fun. What I like best is the lay of different farms, coming out on them from a stretch of woods, or over a hill or round a sudden corner. I like to find folks getting out in spring, raking the dooryard, working near the house. Later, they get out further in the fields. Everything's shut sometimes except the barn. The family's all away in some back meadow. There's a halo to coming when it comes, and later, still they all get driven in. The fields are stripped to lawn, the garden patches stripped to bare ground, the maple trees to whips and poles. There's nobody about. The chimney, though, keeps up a good brisk smoking. And I lie back and ride. I take the reins only when someone's coming, and the mare stops when she likes. I tell her when to go. I've spoiled Jemima in more ways than one. She's got so she turns in at every house, as if she had some sort of curvature. No matter if I have no errands there, she thinks I'm sociable. I maybe am. It's seldom I get down except for meals, though. Folks entertain me from the kitchen doorstep, all in a family row down to the youngest. One would suppose they might not be as glad to see you as you are to see them. Oh, because I want their dollar? I don't want anything they've not got. Never done. I'm there, and they can pay me if they like. I go nowhere on purpose. I happen by. Sorry if there's no cup to give you a drink. I drink out of the bottle. Not your style? Mayn't I offer you? No, 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 thank you. Just as you say. Here's looking at you, then. And now I'm leaving you a little while. You'll rest easier when I'm gone, perhaps. Lie down. Let yourself go and get some sleep. But first, let's see. What was I going to ask you? Those callers. Who shall I address them to? Suppose you aren't awake when I come back. Really, friend, I can't let you. You, you may need them. Not till I shrink, when they'll be out of style. But really, I, I have so many callers. I don't know who I would rather have them. They're only turning yellow where they are. But you're the doctor, as the saying is. I'll put the light out. Don't you wait for me. I've just begun the night. You get some sleep. 
I'll knock so fashion and peep round the door when I come back so you know who it is. There's nothing I'm afraid of like scared people. I don't want you should shoot me in the head. What am I doing carrying off this bottle? There now, you get some sleep. He shut the door. The doctor slid a little down the pillow. <laughs>